Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. Right off the top, I'm going to tell you this is my second time making this video. Originally, this video showed you our newly purchased tool, tested it like we usually do versus a competition, showed you some weird stuff we found along the way doing so, and summarized our findings. And we will touch briefly on those things, but this one had us scratching our heads so much, we purchased our own high-speed camera, hacked the tool up, and stumbled onto some pretty shocking discoveries. Not as in like, this shocking industry secret will change the way you think about tools, exclamation point, but legitimately, I mean, it shocked everyone we shared it with, so we're pretty sure it's not a known thing. Enter the Metabo HBT triple hammer you've been staring at thus far. This is their 36 volt model, a pricier and just higher voltage version of their popular 18 volt triple hammer impact driver. This 36 volt one though is $189, pretty pricey, but people seem to like them so we wanted to see what all the fuss is about. And well, cats out of the bag, you already know we're gonna hack one of these up to peek inside, and we didn't want to do that to this particular spendy specimen, so the only way to really save a buck then is, yes, buy another tool somehow that made sense to us. This is the Metabo HPT 18 volt version of the same tool that we're donating the cadaver of to science after we're done abusing it. These can be found for much more reasonable prices, usually close to $100 or so, about half, which is crazy. The 36 volt advertises 1,859 inch pounds or 155 foot pounds. The 18 volt is 1,832 or 153 ish foot pounds. Let's just jump right into dynoing it versus the 167 foot pound rated Milwaukee Gen 3. Starting here with the 18 volt and our five second working torque process, this is a test that these tools most often meet their specs in. Just 95 foot-pounds, not particularly amazing. Let's see the 36 volt now. Eighty-seven, and this is a median run out of three, like usual. They perform about the same here, but the 36 volt was just lower on average. This is in forward too, where you'd likely be using these tools. The only drivers to score lower than that for us have been the older generations of the Bosch Freak. Moving into reverse now, we have some more developments to unfold, so here's our 10 second max torque test. One hundred and forty eight foot pounds, okay, so about or almost average across all the models we've tested in impact drivers, but check out that curve. Not only did it flatline really dramatically, the display itself fell down one two foot pounds during a test, as in the dyno didn't even know a tool was still attached to it, and it was just relaxing a bit like it usually does after a run. We've never seen that before. Let's check out the thirty six volt model now. The multivolt model scores 165, pretty decent, just about DeWalt DCF 850 numbers wise there, and spread apart from the 18 volt model towards the end. But these tools aren't headed to the rank chart today because they just don't like being dynoed. Not like the Milwaukee Surge that we tried to dyno and that just won't dyno. Something else is clearly going on. You may have heard it yourself during the runs, but like these tools ramp up and then fall off soon thereafter. You can hear it like the impacting changes and it becomes weaker despite being in its highest setting. And we tried multiple settings like you're seeing here with no improvement. Besides not always finishing maybe near the top compared to other brands, other tool tubers have had some weird things going on with these guns as well, like tools and stuff here making these particular screws go all loosey-goosey while his other drivers don't. It's got to be because of that triple hammer design though, right? I mean, what is a triple hammer and has anyone taken one of these apart to confirm it is one? Well, on the second point, a triple hammer or three jaw or tri jaw hammer mechanism I'm familiar with because I've been working on prototyping an air tool that uses one. These have been used for many years, but usually on large one and a half inch square drive, two person impact wrenches and like here on an F1 Paoli pit gun. 
the air motor spins around down here. This rotates the assembly that includes this housing and a hammer. And once per revolution, that encounters this ball bearing that shoots this whole hammer up and the three hammer dogs hit on the anvil all at the same time, then fall back down again each 360 degrees. We've not seen anyone take apart a Metabo HBT triple hammer online, so let's dive into one and see for ourselves. The hammer cage and nose cover are pretty press fit at first, so I can see why no one has shown its gut yet online. Nothing a cutoff tool can't solve though, as we want to see how it works, not just how it looks anyways. Cutting into it reveals that they ain't lying, this is a triple hammer, or as much as a cordless driver can be. The hammer has three lobes, and the anvil has three dogs. Except since electric motors don't like to be stalled out or stop, this thing keeps progressing and you hit three times per revolution. On a standard impact driver, usually you have two hammers and two dogs, two impacts per 360 degrees, or basically an impact per 180 degrees of rotation. This HPT hits every 120 degrees, so more often, and has weird looking three spoke anvil dogs for that purpose. More often hitting means higher impacts per minute, but why then does it lose here on large screws and on our dyno? We felt some footage of the tool working might do the trick to answer that, so that's this at 60 and 100 frames per second with our existing cameras. Pretty cool to see how it works, I think. But also didn't learn a whole lot there. At low power and speeds, you can see it working, but at high power, where we feel that power dropped off in our testing, it's much too fast to see what the heck is happening there. So finally, we stopped dicking around and just bit the bullet, ordered a high-speed camera, and painted the hammer red and the anvil white for ease of identifying while we waited for it to be shipped to us. So this is basically just on lug nuts, 500 frames per second. About 20 seconds of footage would equal one second of real life use. Frankly, I was pretty mystified watching this footage. It's really cool to just see how an impact driver works, especially an oddball one like this triple hammer. But also still losing the plot a bit at this speed. The rest of the footage we're gonna show you today is gonna to be at 1000 frames per second. Beyond that, things get real potato quality like, unless we spend another eight grand or so, I guess. So just keep in mind that all these runs are about this long in real life. It's just taking on and putting on lug nuts. We're using this 3 8 adapter here just to break adapters less often while we're filming these. So here it is with lots of sunlight to reduce noise from the camera. 1000 frames per second just starting to pull the trigger here. 40 seconds, so getting close to one minute of this footage would equal one second worth of impacting in real life. And here's medium power still working as we would expect. That three lobed hammer hitting those 120 degree spaced dogs on the anvil no problem. Now on high power, nearing in on that max trigger squeeze, you can start to see why we, many others too, start to see and feel a power drop. Keep in mind this is all happening during as much as 4,000 impacts per minute that you're watching. So you catching that, it goes from hitting three dogs per rotation like you might expect, to hitting two, skipping over and just landing on top of the next anvil dog every one or two blows or so. At absolute max beans, this happens even more often. It goes to every other hammer blow, then maybe only one in three are hitting sequentially. The majority of impacts are landing on the next dog instead of hitting the side of it to impact and rotate the fastener. So I think this is probably easiest if I just took this all apart and showed you. Basically, here's a hammer, here's the anvil. Well, it would be a female anvil hex, call it. And the hammer dogs. What it should be doing is this, whack, onto the next one, whack, which is what it does at low speed, low power. But at high speed it does this, it goes whack, then onto the next one and onto the top of the next one, and then fall down and then hit the third one in the series. So I'll show that again, bam, whack, slap. You want every single 120 degrees for it to hit the dog, but it's not. At high speed, it's landing on top of one, which is pushing this collet forward, but not resulting in a radial 
impact, which is what you would want. So there's a couple things that would be able to alleviate that. One would be a larger spring right here, which would force this hammer down much quicker, even though it only has 120 degrees of rotation. Uh, a thicker spring would push this down quicker into the next dog, but in order to overcome that, you would need more power or a different gear set to gear reduce down that brushless motor in order to overcome this spring even with smaller HPT batteries. But that would result in lower RPM and lower IPM, which is sort of counter to the purpose of this tool. So it should be doing this, and it's doing this. And it appears as though on everything we've seen and data collected that this happens with both 18 and 36 volt models. You can also see the result of that landing on top of the next dog effect here with the forward impact temporarily releasing the hex collet by knocking it forward, then the spring in that collet bringing it back again, which we don't see with other drivers. It might also help to explain this weird screw mangling tools and stuff saw. That screw, A, is getting some forward blows while getting driven radially, and B, getting quickly varying frequencies of impacting from being driven clockwise with 4,000 impacts per second to 2,000, 1,000, back up to 3,000, etc. in rapid succession. Now I'm sure on a machine that's measuring this frequency, like the hertz of impacting, if you will, HBT is getting 4,000 out of this gun like they expect, but some of those impacts that they're registering at full beans, a lot of those impacts are just forward, not helping much to drive anything. It's worth mentioning we see this phenomenon only on very tight stuff like lug nuts, our dyno for example. Maybe you might see it with large lags or screw fasteners. But when the tool encounters something that turns quite a bit with each impact, let's say a small screw, it acts like it does under medium power even if the trigger is fully pulled because it's not having to hop over a practically stationary anvil dog and seat onto the next one within 120 degrees. The fastener you're driving like a small screw is providing some extra angular travel with that movement. So that's all to say that if you own this tool or want to and you're driving screws and putting together cabinets, stuff like that, one, the 18 volt is as much tool as the 36 volt, so save some money there. And two, just consider this as an interesting phenomenon the brand might have overlooked and was cool to discover and learn about, but the tool might work for you about as well as anything else on the market for many jobs. Here though, we're obviously obsessed with beans. Metabo HBT clearly has a great gun in this with its brushless motor and hammer mass. It could likely be making more power, a lot more power, as a simple two hammer style on a ball and cam sprung hammer mechanism like everyone else uses. Hikoki Japan has come out with their next new gen triple hammer and rumor has it that the release is imminent here in the States as well. So here's hoping that they're smarter than us and have already figured this out. Till then we have our cutoff tool ready to find out for ourselves. This was a long road of discovery for us and the most expensive episode to date for us to complete just for this one little driver, but we've long dreamt about maybe making other videos to explain and show how each type of impact driver, cordless impact wrench, and air impact wrench and their mechanisms work in slow-mo footage. Let us know if you want to see that. Click subscribe to catch that if we make it. And thanks as always for watching.